statement or you haven't read my statement, I've been taking pictures since I was about this tall. And I've actually gone through several different kinds of film cameras and I'm now working predominantly digital. Though I have fallen back lately to uh, film just because it's fun and because using out of date film can <coughs> give you some really cool colors and experiences. So if you're starting to do any film photography, you might want to look into that. Um, tell you what, let's start down here. Um, there's a series of shots I have here on the chakras. Um, that was a project that actually took me about seven years to do. Um, their chakras are your, the energy centers in um, Eastern belief, and they, they go up and down your body. There's seven of them. And I kind of related them to basic archetypes. So until I figured out who was what and how I was going to portray that, it took a while. And I actually started that whole project in film and finished it digitally to give you an idea of how long the difference of process there. Um, very little photo manipulation in any of the photos. Um, I can say the biggest ones that have manipulation are Chakra 2, Chakra 3, and uh, Chakra 7. Those are the ones that have the most digital manipulation. That's like I've got layers going on in Photoshop. Other than that, everything's untouched. Um, I've had several various themes going. Um, I love stairs. Stairs take you places up and down. Um, and I, I like the way Pam really hung these because it does show a big difference between stuff that was probably built at the same time. This is in actually a military fort. This is out in a park. So there's a very different feel to both of them, and I think that has to do with their locations. Um, this stuff, I love uh, landscape photography. There was no special lens used to get that funny feeling of coming down like that. A lot of people use like tilt shift lenses for that. That was all natural. That's just the way the whole creek bed runs in that area. I was very fortunate with that shot. This shot is like one of the ones I am proudest of. Um, this was in the Fairmount Park calendar in 2009. This is the last covered bridge in any urban area in the United States, and it's here in Philadelphia in the Wissahickon. Um, I go back to this bridge. I shoot at summer, spring, winter, fall. And uh, to date, this is still my most favorite of the images of that. Um, and I like to go back and reshoot the same thing over and over because I'm always finding new things about the way the land falls, the way the reflections go. I mean, I was hiking for like two hours and snow this deep to get that shot. Um, coming back down here. The shoes and the photographs on the short wall were all taken up in an abandoned coal breaker. So I like to go crawling around in places that might not necessarily be safe and might not necessarily be legal, um, but sometimes you find the coolest stuff there. What's a coal breaker? A coal breaker is literally where they took the coal after mining it and they put it in great big machines and chopped it down so they could use it and ship it out for um, use in your home. So it was basically an anthracite coal breaker. Um, lots of uh, interesting falling apart equipment. That coal breaker was, has been abandoned for about 40 years. And we are, I was not one of the first people in there. There is definite signs of other people in there. But apparently they have no problem with people walking in. I mean, we parked the car, plain, plain sight, walked in like we knew what we were doing. Not that I'm advocating that anyone should do B and E to get their artwork, but uh, recognize that that's what some people do do. Um, I have a fascination with fire. Um, this is actually one of a series of shots from uh, the Phoenixville Firebird Festival. Um, I have several friends that spin fire. So you will, I have various pictures of people with poi. If you're not familiar with poi, they're usually on a chain. It's got like a tennis ball on the end, a little wrist strap. 
and they light it off and they spin it around and you can get all kinds of pretty cool pictures. That was handheld. That was on a tripod. Um, but having friends that spin give you an opportunity for all kinds of beautiful fire shots. Um, there are um, several groups out, and one of them is the Philadelphia Experiment, if I remember correctly, PEX. Um, they, they just do this as a party thing. They all get together and they hang out, and they, they practice. I've seen people hula hooping with this, um, spinning poi, playing with little nunchucks, but I really like the whole flow that one gets with the jump rope. Um, this photo is of one individual who was dancing around a bonfire. She held that pose for 30 seconds and then moved and you could still see the fire through her belly. And I thought that was really really said a lot about her passion of the moment, as well as it was just really fun and cool to do. Um, now we're right here. Um, there's a little bit of work here from Longwood Gardens. I constantly find inspiration in flowers. Uh, one of the things I like to do is um, very Georgia O'Keeffe-esque portraits of flowers. Uh, however, those are not hanging tonight, but one could almost say that this, this leaf is very tongue-like and wet. <laughs> and, and that's about it, my process. It's kind of hard to talk about. Um, I see things differently when I shoot in black and white versus when I shoot in color. I don't know if any of you have, since you're, some of you are students, if you have worked through processes like that, like you, I'm working this method and I see things this way. When I shoot, when I'm looking for black and white, I, I actually 